CTW Automation here, and we're going to do a video show you getting your dyno uncrated and actually setting it up for the first time. Walk you through all the steps, show you what you have, show you how to put the pieces together so that uh, you have a better understanding and you're ready to go. So here is the machine basically as it's come out of the crate. Still got the wrapping on it and the straps uh, that you've cut out. Um, you get it up on the, the bench. Start to take everything off. I'll show you what's inside. Hopefully, the first thing you come to is a sheet that tells you and walks you through actually all the pieces and how to put it together. Kind of complement the video. You can see this machine came with separate columns. Many of the ones uh, that we have here come with columns will be in it, crossbar, everything will already be on it, but this one is has separate columns, so we'll also show you how to put those in. Get everything off. Be careful not to pull on anything, cause any, any problems. Um, first thing you'll Next thing you'll come to is the emergency stop. Please pull up before use. We actually put a tie wrap on this. You can take off now that you know what it is. Proper operation is it up, down is the emergency stop. So just pull it up. Probably got pushed down in shipping transport. You're going to find a box or two that contains the parts for the machine. Should have the serial number on it. And for the ones without the columns installed, the load cell is actually going to be in a separate box. You have to be careful because the load cell cable is still connected to the dyno. So just take your time. No rush. Take the load cell and crossbar assembly. So this is your temperature, set that aside. This will be your main input power cable. We do not send them with a plug because we're just never sure what kind of receptacle you have on your end. But this is for 223 phase in North America. Green is ground, red, white, and black is your three main power inputs. In the, uh, some of the cases where you only have 220 single phase, we actually just remove the red. So your single phase 220 will be black, white, green for ground. If you have 223 phase, you use the red. Put that over here. You see the, some, some of the parts. This is for the motor control. Actually comes out of the dyno. Just leave that there for now. See, check it over. Here's your front cover. I'm going to show you how to install the columns now. Put the crossbar on. That way, you can get your dyno up and running. So, to install the columns, we take the front cover off, and you just do that by sliding it up. You can see there's some, some threads exposed going down into our yoke assembly. You should have, uh, they may have come in a separate crate or they came in the, the same crate as your dyno. And obviously they're tapped on the end. Um, this instance, you may want to use a little blue Loctite to put these together. It depends on how often you might want to remove the columns, but the idea is you must get them tight. because They can show up in your data if they're loose. Now what you'll need for this is a quarter inch Allen inch block where the column's going to go down into. You don't have to take both of them loose, you just have to take the pinch side loose. If you look in, you can see the pinch pretty easily. It's on opposite sides. Let's get it 
drinks. Take your cup, watch for your ceiling. Like I said, you might want to put a little blue Loctite on, but just simply wind it down, get it as tight as possible. Okay, now you can see through the magic of video editing, we have the columns in, they're tight, maybe you've used Loctite, it's up to you. The last thing we wanna do is tighten the block back up because it's a pinch block. It'll be another way to hold the columns. Get those tight. And the next important part is adding the items that go on the columns before we put the crossbar on. Because if you don't, you will then have to take the crossbar back off. So you open your box that we have packed for you at every dyno, and inside you're going to see your key and your memory stick. Take those out, put those aside. Have your USB cable for your data card. You have your preload block one inch and two inches. I'll show you how to use that later. You have your quick adjust split collar and your clevis pins and clevis fixtures. So we'll set those aside, but the things we needed to have are the column clamp and the temperature block. So we're gonna put those on. Okay, so we've put the IR temp sensor holder on. You wanna have the the words going the right way, the CTW, or if we've made one special for you. And you want to have the temperature on this side because that's where it's going to connect to the electronics board. Over here, we've put our quick adjust split collar. Go ahead and set it up, and by tensioning it the right way, you can get it to do where you like. Next thing we're going to do is put the crossbar on. All right, now we've installed the crossbar so that the machine is getting closer to being ready. Set these where, wherever you'd like. The crossbar comes with, handles obviously to tighten, nice little bearing inside. And remember, you can also pull these out once they're tight to adjust them in that manner. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to put our IR temp sensor back in the holder has two nuts on it, slide it in, put the other nut on, and it's a 7 8 wrench to tighten that up. You can extend it or keep it flat just based on how far away you would like it from your damper. It has at minimum a 12 inch range, so it does not have to be that close. Keep that in mind. So. Next thing we'll do, start connecting the cables. And for this CTW dynos, most everything goes in the back. You have your load cell cable coming out of the back and you have your temperature cable coming out. The electronics board is located in the back of the machine. If you ever need to see that. You take your data cable and that plugs into the little port on the top and that will go to your computer. I'll set that aside there. Next thing we'll put the clevises on and see how they work because we sometimes have some issues with these but you've probably gotten a pair that looks just like this and it has this little brass button. The little brass button has a little shoulder on it so that when you put it in like that it does not fall out. You're absolutely correct if you put it in this way no matter how hard you try it will continue to fall out so keep that in mind screw that on there and do the same for the bottom we do make different sizes of these for different eyelets but these are standard at a half inch 12 and a half millimeters so there's the start 
get your dyno up and running, set up the cables, and then we can go into the next phase, hooking it to power, connecting to the computer. All right, the next thing is hooking up to your input power. As we talked before, in America, North America, we have three-phase th three 220 and single-phase 220. Um, we use ground, green is ground, black, white, and red. So for single-phase, we just use black and white and basically cut back and wire not the red. For three-phase, we add the red wire to get that third leg of 220. Now, you can use various plugs you can get at Lowe's, commercially available, to power up your machine. That's up to you. We like to use these switch boxes because they're easy to go in and out of, and they're nice, protected with a fuse. So there's our three legs of power and our grounding bar going back to the bus. All right, so we've hooked up to power. Our switch box, we're going to turn it on. Hopefully everything goes well. And what you'll notice is if we are seeing power, the little light's going to come on in the front here, and that gives you a good indication that you have input power and everything's working. Okay, we're going to show you how to hook up to the computer, all the things you need. Uh, two very important parts is the USB memory stick, which has the software, your calibrations, everything we need to get to you, your manuals, your team viewer, things like that. And you have your software key. This is a key, a license. This is basically when you buy the probe software, this gives you that right to collect data. You can put the probe software on as many computers as you want. It's on the, our website. You can download it, use it in demo version, use it to make graphs and reports. You do all that, but to collect data from your machine, you need to have this key. So one per dyno. You can also use a USB hub. Computers nowadays, they have fewer and fewer USB ports, so get a good quality USB hub so you can expand and use everything on your computer, like if you also have an extra wireless mouse. So, the first cable is your USB data cable. And they should all be white so that you can tell the difference right, right away. It plugs into the back on the back right side. That we want to plug in, when all, whenever possible, directly to the computer. If you think about it, this is the data. So this is all the sensors coming through 16-bit live streaming. So pretty important to get it right to the computer so that there's never a problem going through a hub. The next part is the motor control cable. So this isn't as important as the data cable. So you can plug this into your USB hub. You can also plug in your software key to the hub. And last but not least, for your trying to do your new setup, plug in your memory stick and then plug that into the computer so we can see it. And so always remember, everything needs to be plugged in, the dyno needs to be powered on before you start the software. So once you have everything plugged in, you plug in your USB memory stick and your computer will go out and find it more than likely. You see USB drive. There's gonna be a folder on it called copy to the desktop, CTW automation. So just grab it and drag it over and it will bring over all the things you need to get your dyno software loaded, to get TeamViewer, to get your calibration files, everything you need we put on there. Once it's done, we'll go look in what's inside a little bit more so that you understand what we've sent you. And there we go. Copy to desktop. So if you open the, that folder, you find some items inside. You have the software setup. You have your probe software manual. You have a manual for your field instructions, so how do you do your notes pages. You have the most important thing is the zip folder, and that is the folder that contains your calibration. So every dyno is unique, 
Every dyno has its own calibrations because all the sensors are different on each dyno. So this has everything on the desktop and we can go from there. The last thing you'll see as well is this team viewer. That's CTW Probe's team viewer. You use that for uh, allow us to remote in so we can help you uh, without being, being there with you. So we can run your computer, run your dyno, give you training even using this team viewer application. So all these things are important. You want to make sure they're on your desktop before you start.